Good. Okay, so let's um, quickly uh, review what we did last time and finish the page rank, and then we move up uh, probably to voting algorithms uh, next time. But, uh, so you remember, we had several heuristics about the uh, page rank, right? Uh, the first heuristic was that uh, uh, the page rank should have the following uh, uh, property. That um, so this is your page B, this is page B one, all the way uh, up to page B N. Right? We would like the property that the rank of every page B satisfies the following condition: that it is sum over all pages B I that point that have a link pointing to page P, and then a rank of page PI um, divided by the number of outgoing links of the page uh, PI. So you can think of um, the structure of the web as a kind of a recommender system, right? When a page puts a link, uh, if it has a link pointing to another web page P, this means that this page, in a sense, thinks that this uh, uh, P is important, right? So this is uh, considered like P, uh, P1 recommending uh, page P, right? Uh, and so, this would kind of say that uh, the importance of a page is uh, weighted sum of importances of all pages that point out, point to that page, right? Um, because this will be large just in case these, or at least some of these are large, while uh, this is not very large, while this is reasonably small. Right, because the importance that uh, uh, P1 confers to P is prorated, it's given in equal portions to all uh, web pages uh, that uh, uh, P1 points uh, at, right? So this would fit our intuition that uh, uh, P should be considered important only if uh, sufficient number of important pages that, is, that are quite discriminating, right? That do not give too many recommendations. Um, is, uh, this will be large just in case this is large and uh, this is reasonably small. So that's a first uh, uh, intuition, first heuristics. Uh, you can call it heuristics one. Right. Uh, now, for heuristics two, we can make the following thought experiment, right? Um, you can imagine the entire world wide web, and you pick one fixed web page P, just randomly, P is any web page, right? Uh, and then you have a random surfer who uh, follows a randomly picked link uh, at page P and gets to another web page, uh, say B1, then again picks a random link and follows uh, it to another page P2, and so forth. And you can imagine that uh, uh, you let the surfer go for a while and then at some random but quite large after a reasonable uh, number of steps, you stop him and you look at what page he is at when you, when you stop him, right? 
and then you repeat this experiment many, many times, and you count how many times the surfer ended up in P2, how many times in P1, and so forth. And uh, the ratio of total number of experiments versus the number of uh, experiments when uh, the surfer ended up in P2 can be taken to be uh, a kind of proxy to measure the importance of that web page. Now notice, for this to make sense, it should be the case that uh, if you let the surfer surf for a large number of clicks, the probability to end up at a particular page P should stabilize, right? So for as long as the surfing history is long enough, uh, for this to make sense to measure the importance of the web pages should be that uh, uh, as, you know, so the surfer does this for, say, uh, as many clicks, right? Uh, it should be such that if you uh, increase uh, uh, S, the probability, right, that uh, uh, that probability that the surfer X is at state, uh, um, uh, say, PI, uh, should uh, converge. Right, for as long, so for uh, as long as the surfing history is long enough, probability uh, that you are at uh, any particular web page uh, should converge. Uh, now, notice that this intuition, right, is actually um, consistent with these heuristics here. If you interpret the ranks as probability that after large surfing history, you end up in a particular page PI, right? Why is that so? Well, <coughs> if after as many clicks, um, you are at a particular page P, the only way how you can get at P, right, after as many clicks, is that after S minus one many clicks, you were at some uh, PI that points to P, right, because that's the only way for a surfer to get to this uh, web page if it's not the starting web page. But then what's probable, you see, if after S1 many clicks, probability to be here or here is the same as probability to be there after S many clicks. If we have this property that this probability stabilizes, right? <coughs> So then probability that after as many, uh, as many clicks you end up in B is, will be simply sum probability to be at this point, right? So it's precisely this. If you interpret rho, so interpret uh, rho as probability. Right, so the probability to be at that uh, web page after a large number of clicks, right? Because this is precisely what this says. Probability to end up here is equal to probability to end up here divided by the number of outgoing links because if you are here, you are not guaranteed to come up here, but you can uh, here, with probability 1 over the number of outgoing links, because you choose the uh, which link to follow at random, right? And so this precisely says uh, that uh, uh, if this is the case, uh, right, if you interpret uh, page rank as probability to be 
at a particular web page after a large number of fixed large number of clicks, then this precisely this formula should be satisfied by um, rho equals so rho of p i is precisely uh, this probability, right? So that's uh, but again. Um, here, for these heuristics to work, we have to uh, know that such a row exists and moreover that it is unique, as we saw last time. Here, for this to make sense, it should be the case that no matter where you start from, for as long as your surfing history is long enough, probability that at the end you will be at the page pi should stabilize, should be the same, right? Otherwise, it will make no sense if, uh, uh, if uh, uh, the page rank would depend on particular surf surfing history. So, so here we let the surfers uh, surf for a large number of steps, and then we stop it, see where he is, and then we repeat many times this experiment, and we simply count how many times out of total number of uh, experiments we ended up in P2, how many times in P1, and this will be approximately this probability. So this is heuristics number two. Right? Um, so, what is the heuristics number three? It is, again, very similar uh, to, this, to this one, uh, but instead of uh, uh, letting the surfer uh, surf the web uh, and then stopping it and then repeating that experiment many times, you just take one single surfing, but very large, say T, is equal to say uh, uh, whatever uh, 10 to uh, 10 or something reasonably large times the um, number of web uh, web pages on the on the entire web, right? And you let your surfer continuously uh, surf, right? And you count after this long uh, surfing history, extremely long surfing history, how many times uh, uh, you visited each web page, and then you define the uh, rank of page P as the ratio of the number of times uh, P is visited divided by this total number, total duration of uh, surfing, right? So that's our heuristics uh, number three. So we saw this heuristics is kind of compliant with this heuristics. And you can kind of see that this complies with these heuristics because if the probabilities to be at a particular web page stabilize eventually, then clearly the number of times that you visit a particular web page will be probability to be at that page after long surfing history divided by total number of experiments. So uh, this, in a sense, let's put it in quotation marks, implies this, and this kind of implies uh, this. So, but for this to make sense, right, you have to have the property that uh, the number of times you visit each web page <coughs> does not depend on where you start from, right? And it does not depend on any particular choice of 
uh, any particular surfing history, how you choose which uh, uh, link uh, to click. And in fact, page rank, as was defined uh, by uh, these two Google guys, uh, uh, page and trim, was uh, uh, kind of complies in a very natural way with all of these three intuitions, but in some way, it has to ensure uh, that uh, neither here nor here uh, the probabilities will depend <coughs> on a particular starting point or surfing history, and that uh, an equation, there will be a unique row that solves uh, something that resembles this system of equations, uh, but it's amended in a way to guarantee that uh, uh, that uh, the conditions for the validity of these three models are uh, uh, satisfied. So, uh, and we also saw that these equations can be written in a very compact way in matrix four. I think I will have to resolve to multimedia, otherwise the board will be blocked. So. Yes, uh, Alex, like for heuristic one to be true, uh, I think the transition matrix would have to be a regular uh, Markov matrix. Uh, yes, so this is where we are heading. We want to, um, uh, we want to characterize the uh, conditions in terms of something very general uh, called uh, Markov discrete Markov process or Markov chain that uh, is very important in computer science uh, um, because uh, many applications uh, use that concept uh, to model certain phenomena and of course design algorithms accordingly. Okay, so to write this system of equations, this simply if you uh, say that a raw vector rho is the vector of rho of P1 up to rho of Pn, uh, where n is the total number of web pages on the web, then it's easy to see that uh, uh, this equation simply says that vector rho transpose, sorry, this is Vectors are always written as columns, and since I wrote it as a row, I should put a transpose uh, here. So the row transpose equals the same vector times matrix uh, G0, where G0 looks uh, as uh, follows. G0 uh, has uh, so the size of the matrix is uh, the total number of uh, web pages, right? And you can imagine that pages are indexed P1, P2, P, uh, N, and here likewise P1, P2, somewhere here is P, um, I, and somewhere here is P, uh, J, and then we have zeros everywhere except one over the number of outgoing links of uh, P, I at the web pages, right, at the web pages uh, uh, so that P, I points, points at them. Uh, Right, so all of these numbers are equal. Right, so it's a very sparse uh, matrix because the length of this row is the total number of uh, uh, pages on the web, so it's in uh, hundreds of billions, uh, uh, but there are only a few uh, non-zero entries, four, so this is, uh, uh, so this uh, entry G 
ij is equal to 1 over total number of outgoing links of pi. Um, if and only if uh, uh, pi points to uh, pj. Right? So now, if you think, uh, if you take this vector rho, so you will have something like this rho of p1, and then here is somewhere rho of pi, uh, rho of pj, up to a rho of uh, pn, uh, when n is, uh, right, this is our capital N. If you multiply this with this matrix, right, Right, that's a matrix so that uh, that has not zero entries only when uh, for uh, columns so that uh, um, pi points to uh, pj. Yeah. <coughs> and now if you think, uh, so the j entry uh, will be achieved if this is your column that corresponds to pj, then the, in the output, right, uh, you will have a row of pj is obtained when you multiply this vector with the corresponding column. But in the corresponding column, you have everywhere a zero except at web pages uh, that point to pj, right? And at these places, the rank of uh, uh, pi will be multiplied by the corresponding i-th entry uh, here. So this will result, uh, so precisely, uh, rho of uh, pj uh, will be precisely uh, sum of rho of pi over number of outgoing links of pi for all pi that point to pj, right? Because that's precisely when you multiply this with this column, it will kill all of these and it will preserve only those. Uh, so somewhere here is uh, uh, rho of pk, right? So if I, if this times this will survive, uh, but uh, the next one, if it's zero, here it will be annihilated and so forth. So only uh, the sum of this times this column will be precisely this. Uh, so this is a matrix representation and we saw, saw last time we say that uh, this uh, from the point of view of linear algebra simply says uh, that one is the eigenvalue of the matrix G and that a rho is um, that rho is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one, right? Because here we have essentially one times a rho. In general, for one, uh, for um, uh, for eigenvalues, you can have here arbitrary complex uh, scalar, right? Alex, yes. Uh, should that be multiplication on the left for G? For G, G0, should that be on the left? Uh, no, because it's notice here, oh, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, notice that this is vector rho transposed. So this is a rho vector. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So, okay, but why should one be an eigenvalue for G0 
And why should it have a unique eigenvector associated with one? This obviously uh, is not guaranteed by anything that we have said so far. Okay, so next step of what we did is uh, uh, we went back to our um, um, we went back to our heuristics, right? And we want to Sorry. Well, that's what the uh, session. Uh, let's see. I have had it done. Just what would I have done with the eraser? Uh, gee, this is really strange, I guess. Oh, here it is. Uh, I do it. Okay, so uh, we go back to the to the second heuristic and the third heuristics, right? So, what could be obstacles for, if you look at the heuristics here, what would be the obstacles uh, for these probabilities to converge? Well, we saw, for example, one problem is what do we do when we hit a dangling web page? A web page that doesn't have any outgoing links. We have to do something, right? And the second thing is uh, uh, we have to make sure we don't enter one of kind of traps, right? That is consists of uh, uh, a group of web pages that might point uh, um, to each other, but that, and there is one incoming, uh, say, link and no outgoing links. In this case, the surfer, once the surfer gets inside, uh, he cannot leave. And this was resolved by slightly changing our model, namely uh, we had the following um, intuition. Uh, if you hit a dangling web page, you randomly jump to any other web page. So you stop the surfing and jump to a random web page. What would this mean in terms of our uh, matrix? Well, this is essentially saying that our matrix is amended as follows. If something is a dangling web page, we uh, replace all the zeros with 1 over n, because we choose at random any um, Right, so instead of zeros, we put one over n everywhere. Right? So this would essentially mean if uh, if p uh, p um, i is dangling, right? Uh, then uh, what you do, you go to arbitrary web page, so there is, it, it's essentially saying that uh, uh, a dangling web page has very weak links uh, to absolutely every single other web page on the web and even a link to pointing uh, back to itself, right? And uh, uh, so because the probabilities are prorated, right, then you will see that uh, um, uh, this is a good uh, uh, model because this would kind of say that probability, if we interpret uh, as probabilities the, uh, the ranks, then this would say that the probability 
to jump from a dangling web page to any other web page is uh, uh, equal uh, and it's uh, one over the total number of web pages. So that's one fifth, right? Uh, now notice this matrix is no longer sparse or at least it's not as sparse as it was before, but it can be represented in a compact way, nevertheless. How do we uh, avoid getting trapped inside a, a small subset of web pages? Uh, the idea is uh, that uh, our surfer eventually gets impatient uh, and stops following the links uh, and randomly jumps to an arbitrary web page. What would this mean? When does he jump? Well, each time he is on a web page, with probability alpha, he will follow one of the links. And with probability y minus alpha, it will jump uh, to, of course, one of an alpha divided by n it will jump to an arbitrary, to any other web page. So, right, it's like, uh, now not only the dangling web pages, but now absolutely all web pages are connected to every other web page, except that, that some of the links are much stronger, right, because uh, uh, the weight here will be alpha divided by number of outgoing links of pi, uh, while here it will be 1 minus alpha divided by n. But so uh, the corresponding change in the matrix it will make the matrix full, right? Because what do we do? So wherever we have a dangling web page, we have 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n. And for any other um, web page pi, we will have uh, 1 minus alpha divided by n, 1 minus alpha divided by n, and then alpha time alpha divided by the number of outgoing links of pi plus uh, 1 minus alpha divided by n because now for any web page uh, even the web page is such that uh, a pi points at uh, right uh, there are two ways to get there one is by following the link and another way is just that the surfer got impatient and picked uh, the next web page at random, and it happened just that uh, it's precisely this uh, web page, uh, right? So all other all web pages, including the uh, ones that have links, uh, get this factor. Are you with me? Is it clear what we are doing? This is really, really very, very basic thing about the page. So now the beautiful thing, yes? I do have a question here. Okay, so if you are replacing the one over a number of pi in a particular entry, um, it means page pi is only linked to page pi. So for example, if like if you look at the other metrics that you wrote, because the white door, like the white color above, like pi also links um, maybe to several other web pages. So probably also links to PL, and then in that particular metric, you have one one over a number of PI. And here, if you are replacing it, like if you are multiplying a um, alpha on top of it. So it will sum up precisely as it should, because, so let's uh, check this. Uh, what is the sum of all rows? So here, the sum is 1. Here, what is the sum? Well, the sum is 1 minus alpha divided by n times n, right? Plus, here we will have alpha. Oh, so, yeah. 
times some number of pi plus 1 over the number of pi, right? And there will be precisely number of pi, many of them. So uh, this all sums up to 1. So this is still what we call a stochastic matrix, and uh, the numbers can be still interpreted as probabilities. Now, okay. yes. How about the column of this matrix? Yes. OK, so the column of each matrix uh, tells you the probability to end up. Uh, so the column of, of each matrix will give you the factors uh, that you have to multiply the uh, ranks and sum them up in order to get the probability to be, so to get a rank of pj, right? Because these will be transitions from this point to that point. So when you multiply with a, uh, with a uh, row vector, right? When you multiply, so this is row p1 all the way to row pn. So output of this matrix, right? We want it to be a, ra a rank of the page pj, um, right? Uh, we look at the j coordinate. Well, j coordinate of the output is determined by a product of our ranks with these columns. So the columns will be <coughs> precisely probabilities for each of the corresponding web pages to transition to that web page. So the columns are precisely the multipliers for these guys so that you have, in fact, um, this equation satisfied, right? <coughs> Except that some, somewhere, so what would be, let's write it, uh, um, uh, what the matrix uh, would be like. So let me see, let me go to uh, your actual